Welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I am Dr. Paul Zalzo. And I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And on today's episode, we're going to talk about patellofemoral syndrome. Also known as anterior knee pain or chondromalacia patella. Yes, a wide variety of names for this problem. Ultimately, it's yeah, pain in the front of your knee that doesn't necessarily have a specific traumatic cause. Um, so I guess start at the beginning. Uh, who, uh, who gets it and how do they complain about it? So, actually this used to be called, or maybe still is, uh, movie, movie theater knee, I think is that what you call it? <laughs> movie theater knee. Yeah, okay. it came on after you were sitting for a long time watching a movie. Oh, with your knee bent. With Got your it. knee bent, okay. yeah, because when your knee is bent, here's a model of a knee, here's our patella that's come right off. Um, and when you sit with your knee bent, you can see that the pressure in the patella femoral joint is very high and that can lead to some discomfort. So people who get this, quite wide range, often young people uh, and more often women than men. For sure. And uh, they complain of pain in the front of their knee. Yeah, usually activities for me that I hear are kneeling, squatting, stairs, uh, running, like repetitive type activities. Yeah, or sitting yeah. for a long period of time, driving for a long time. More of a dull aching pain rather than a sharp stabbing pain, but sometimes they can have sharp stabbing pain or a sensation of locking, clicking, or catching. Right. Uh, and very common. In fact, I, I think that this is uh, the most common cause of knee pain when someone presents to a primary care physician complaining about their knee. I would believe that. It's super common. Um, often doesn't get to a surgeon necessarily because a lot of times it's not a surgical problem, but we'll certainly get to that part. So once you've done the history, Paul, and someone says, hey, I, don't, I haven't had any trauma and I have front of the knee knee pain, what do we usually find on physical exam? So physical examination, uh, the knee can look very normal, uh, you have a great range of motion, uh, but some of the uh, key things that I like to do is I actually um, feel the patella with my thumb and sort of push it over, sublux it over, then try and feel the underside of the patella okay. to the skin, the medial patellar facet or lateral patellar facet, uh, so the faces of the patella and see if they're tender. Okay, that's good. Um, things that I do too, I like to look at the alignment of the legs, so sometimes in women, particularly as they're, as they're going through puberty and as their uh, hips widen, the angle of their knees increases, so that can increase the amount of force that's pulling the kneecap to the outside, which can be part of a cause of that anterior knee pain. The other thing I like to do is take the patella and pull it to the outside to see if they have any apprehension. Because mm -hmm. sometimes people are like, oh, I don't like the sensation of that, that really feels weird, or that reproduces my pain. So sometimes that's something that can give you an idea of what the potential cause is. Well, and there's another classic test we call the quadricep grind test, uh, where you actually put pressure just above the patella, pushing downward and then ask the patient to contract their quadriceps and it pulls the patella over the femur while you're applying pressure down. If that causes a lot of pain, it could be a sign that there is inflammation in that area. You kind of trap it. Usually I do that test last because once you do it once, then they don't. No, they're not people very aren't happy. happy. It's really if you're trying, if you're not sure of the diagnosis. Absolutely. But yeah, I do that regularly. That's a, that's a great test. So you've done your physical exam. Now you're suspicious of patellofemoral syndrome. Um, Orthopedics, we always get x-rays. What kind of special x-rays do you get for this right. problem? There's a special view we get in, in orthopedics called the skyline view, where the knee is bent and we take an x-ray looking up underneath the patella. And we, we're trying to see how does the patella track inside the groove at the end of the femur. And it's basically looking for, we're looking for maltracking or seeing how the patellofemoral joint articulates. Uh, the other test, x-ray, of course, we're interested in is a long leg view to look at the alignment of the leg, like Dr. Weening mentioned. If you're very knock-kneed, that can predispose you to uh, patellofemoral syndrome. In a true Canadian example, I always talk to people, it's like a bobsled going down a track. So, you know, your the track's kind of like this, and you want to be coming right down the middle. And if, if, it, if you're up on either side, the amount of pressure on that side is abnormal, and that can lead to arthritis, and certainly can cause to, to focal pain. And most commonly, it tracks to the outside. I don't know that I've actually ever seen a medial track. No, I yeah, think they track the outside because of the muscle. And that actually sort of talks about how we treat these. Okay, so um, right to surgery? I operate on all these. <laughs> no, I don't think, uh, surgery is definitely not the standard of care for patellofemoral syndrome. Last resort. Yes. Very last resort. Uh, the, the vast majority of the time we treat these non-operatively yep. with um, activity modification, anti-inflammatories, if the patient can tolerate it, topical anti-inflammatories. Yep. And 
I think one of the keys is physiotherapy. Totally agree. And what do we tell the physios to do with these knees? So I tell the physios to work on range of motion and strengthening and with a specific focus on medial quadriceps strengthening right. for me. VMO strengthening. Vastus medialis obliquus is the part of the quadricep muscle that helps the kneecap track properly towards the inside of the knee. I, I use a lot of analogies when I'm talking it to people. So, like do. so I talk about like a tug of war, and the, the medial muscles and the lateral muscles are pulling that kneecap back and forth, and the lateral muscles invariably are stronger. So you really need to do what you can to help those medial muscles out. One way is with physiotherapy, the other way is with a brace, when, either an over the counter knee sleeve that has a little patellar cutout, or even potentially a custom brace that really works on pushing that kneecap back to the medial side. Make the, make the tug of war more even. Yeah. So. Um, all right, so we've got anti-inflammatories, if you can tolerate it, some analgesics if required, topical treatments, physiotherapy, yep. bracing. Um, so, uh, and, you know, this isn't easy to treat. This doesn't, it's, you don't walk out of the office cured. This is a long process. Yeah, like usually two, three weeks, they're perfect. Yeah, <laughs> in your clinic. Yeah, probably. no, I agree, it, years. And sometimes yeah. I tell you, we have to get you through puberty, and yeah. we have to get you fully mature. So yeah, yeah, it definitely can be years. And maybe might be permanent, actually. My puberty's not tough enough. <laughs> yeah, sorry about puberty. Yeah. Here's some knee pain. Yeah, so uh, it's benign process, yes. telospermal syndrome. So it's, it's not extremely uh, serious, but it can be quite debilitating. I think, I think the other trouble for teenage girls, too, is that everyone's telling them they should be more active, and they're like, you know, when I run, it hurts. And, I, yeah. and you can see that their mom is giving them, like, the evil eye. Yeah. Why don't you exercise more? And the kid's like, I mean, I just can't run because it hurts. And so then they're opting out of phys ed, and they're not doing their other activities. So, yeah. yeah, anything you can do to control the pain and get them back to being active, I think, is really critical. Yeah. So, um, all right. So we've, we've talked about the non-operative treatment here. In some rare cases, yep. surgery is indicated for certain uh, conditions. For example, if the patella is really tilting abnormally, yep. you may need a surgical intervention. If your alignment is really off, you're very knock-kneed and that's predisposing you, uh, you may need a surgical uh, intervention. Yep. These are specialized operations that would be dealt by a case-by-case -case basis by your yep. surgeon. Yeah, and, and very rare. Yeah, long run at non-operative treatment before you should consider What about that. injections? Have you ever tried any visco supplementation injections yep. for this? Absolutely. So definitely have with certainly some benefit. I think visco supplement has a role. Um, a lot of times I find the younger patients are not keen on injections, mm -hmm. and especially if you start talking about cortisone or injecting a steroid, they're not crazy about that. But yeah, in refractory cases where people are really frustrated and uh, not having success with the other treatments, I think it's not unreasonable. Okay. So now... You've had telephemoral syndrome. You might have been struggling with this all your life. Fast forward 20, 30, 40 years. What, what does that knee look like? What can it look like? I think it depends, but you could end up with severe patellofemoral arthritis. So like Paul's talking about before, if you have severe tracking issues, then you could end up with a very vocally advanced arthritis of the lateral facet of your patella yeah. and the trochlear, that curved part of your femur. So yes, you can get advanced arthritis for sure, and then all the treatments for arthritis apply up to and including a knee replacement. So sometimes you'll do knee replacements for isolated patellofemoral arthritis. It's uncommon, but it's not impossible. Right, so you can, it's kind of like a spectrum. You're starting with the young people, it's a patellofemoral syndrome or anterior knee pain or chondromalacia patella. And as uh, you go through life, this sort of anterior knee pain may transition into a patellofemoral arthritis down the road, or it might even stay as just a chondromalacia patella, a soft cartilage under the kneecap that haunts you, you know, throughout the ages. But I think the keys are managing it as well as you can non-operatively, keeping your knee as strong as possible to help the patella track well. Avoiding the things that hurt. Exactly. Avoid the things that are bugging you. Yeah. Don't sit for a long period of time like we are right now with our knees bent. I have chondromalacia patella. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that pretty well is everything I have to say about it. Perfect. Telephemoral syndrome. If you guys have any further questions about this topic or any other topics for that matter, please feel free to email us at info at talkingwithdocs.com. And remember, uh, you are in charge of your own health. And if you found this video helpful, please like it on YouTube or subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.